and these other uh, UK-based promotions potentially on the network for... I heard that the, the rights fee that they're negotiating, that WWE is negotiating, is not that much at all. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is just a lot more content for your nine ninety five a month. Mick Foley, thumbs up. <laughs> well, what my assumption with that will be is it will be similar to... Uh high spots wrestling network right now like they have select progress stuff that is behind they've got select pwg stuff that's behind uh they're just kind of a catch-all so if you know if they're running two or three shows behind and it just ends up being a a way to expose that that way the people like me that love progress and subscribe to demand progress like i'm gonna watch that show the day it it finally goes up every time and i'm gonna pay my 750 a month to do that but if they can gain new audience for talent, uh, mainly to see what who's buzzing, and then, then they can throw money at. And for these other promotions, too, that may be hosting UK championship matches or what, whatever the, this UK endeavor is going to look like, uh, some buzz for them to sell more tickets and push them further. Uh, I, I think everybody benefits, but I'm naive. And you figure, I mean, as they do that, I mean, maybe they have a live show or uh, at least a special show, a what we used to call a pay-per-view, every three months or so, maybe on the network to kind of co-inside with, um, you know, the uh, the uh, their own specific networks um, access so that they can turn around and have something that's heavily advertised all over the network and again, get that more exposure in exchange for having, you know, a live show that gets the buzz. So yeah, if they're going to do this weekly live show, here's, here's my concern off the bat. The, the, the 16 guys they had in this tournament, well, as good as they are, holy, holy hell, they need more depth because some, some of these guys are real green. And I'm, I mean that in the best way possible. Like Roy Johnson, He's only been wrestling for two years. He was a fan who originally went to Progress and then started training at their do- at the Projo, which is the school that Progress owns, uh, and has only been wrestling for two years now. They, they, they need a, a stronger base of talent in order to be able to pull off their own thing, which is why I think this is going to end up being, hey, here's a, here's a match we did at Progress. Here's a match we did at ICW. That's our right, show. That's- and that's where I was going. Maybe every three months you have something in there. So you don't necessarily have to build a storyline because if you're having a weekly show, you're going to have to throw storylines in there and it's, it's going to get lost with the average wrestling fan, say that subscribes to the network. They're watching raw, they're watching SmackDown. And they're, now they're watching two Oh five live. They're watching NXT. Now you're asking them potentially to watch another hour of UK programming and another hour of, oh, I don't know, Japanese programming, you know, to – I don't think that they're necessarily going to do that. They, they may have a special event every once in a while, but I, I think it's more of letting – letting the promotions go on their own and just being able to have the access. Like you said, you know, like – Here's shows from a couple of weeks ago. The, the same kind of turnaround time that you can get Raw and SmackDown on the network, you know, just like maybe a month behind or something like that, so that they're not losing uh, cash flow from their own subscription service, but at the same time, you're getting access and potentially seeing wrestlers that did wrestle. I mean, you get to see like old stuff. Uh, from those shows like so you can see guys that maybe are on 205 live now that oh i can look back and see their older matches that they had when they used to wrestle for progress or something like that so it's i mean a lot of people go and use the network i think for that back catalog to see i mean like my kids watch the network and a lot of times they're going oh let me see Enzo and Cass when they were in NXT. Let me see Carmella debut, you know, things like that. They want to go back two, three, five, you know, in the case of like John Cena, to see Cena circa 2002. They want to see retro Cena. They want to see all that and that's what the network gives them so they can go all the way back and check out these things. So, I mean, that's that's what they're getting with the tape library, let's say, from 
these UK things to be able to see those type of wrestlers that maybe are starting to get access on NXT or things like that, but they're going to be able to have that access later on down the line. So we finish, they finish up this UK tournament ever. Everything that comes after that's kind of up in the air now. Um, we know they're planning a women's tournament, uh, potentially for the summer. I think, like I said, Paul confirmed that in an interview with Fox Sports, I want to say, and also confirmed it on Wrestling Observer Live yesterday. Um, what comes after the women's tournament? Um, it's clearly, this is a, this is a, a thing they want to keep doing uh, <laughs> quarterly or biannually or whatever. Well, we've we've hit our our separate things that we can do. I mean, in the sense that we have our we have a cruiserweight champion. We can because all these tournaments are going to kind of rely on a belt. I think outside of the women's tournament, I'm not sure what you can give for that outside of a trophy. Although technically, the cruiserweight classic was only supposed to be for a trophy as well, and then they said, "Oh, let's throw a belt on it as well." But um, but I mean, you have like your your separate classifications. You have your cruiserweights. You have your women. You have your European base because I don't think they're necessarily going to go. Hey, let's have a German tournament. Hey, let's have a you know Bulgarian tournament. But I I think, and it would be a partnership of some variety. But I think you you have to think that. WWE is looking at Japan in some aspect, uh, not necessarily with its own promotion like a WWE Far East or anything like that. But there are plenty of promotions over there that would be willing to work. I mean, that's how Japan was for the longest time. That uh, New Japan had a, pro, uh, a working relationship with WCW for the longest time. Uh, WWF used to work with, uh, I can't think of the promotion, but it was a uh, Tenru's promotion and they had done work with all Japan as well. I mean, that was just what it was. It was this kind of cross promotional thing. Now I think new Japan sees them as a threat and there's not going to be any kind of affiliation there, especially since new Japan's working with uh, ring of honor in the first place, but there are plenty of promotions over there that would probably love to have that wwe rub whether it be an all japan a noah um it won't be noah since that's basically new japan at this point is it now no essentially oh Mizawa's dead so i don't know what it is anymore but um but i mean there are plenty of i mean cruise rate promotions like um um i can't even think of the stuff anymore i'm not on top of it ddt just wwe and ddt pro oh that's just the best comment vince would laugh his ass off <laughs> he's wrestling a blow-up doll <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't. they don't even know what it is <laughs> oh did you see that guy he kicked that nine-year-old straight to hell what the speaking hell, of vince? kenny omega <laughs> oh we'll get there for yeah. all, all two seconds of the conversation, I think that'll be, and I'm pretty sure that's why I put it last on the rundown. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, yeah, they, they're going to find a partner there. They found partners in the UK. They're essentially doing what New Japan has already done, and you kind of touched on this earlier. You know, New Japan has uh, their partnership with Ring of Honor here in the United States, uh, CMLL down in Mexico, and they're actually having their Fantastica Mania shows that I think actually start tonight. Uh, will not be staying up to watch that. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, I, I will catch up on it because they're always good shows. Um, uh, Rev Pro in the UK, which Shibata is at, was actually ho- is still holding the British Heavyweight Championship, which is uh, Rev Pro's title. Well, he um, can time travel, so he can do whatever he wants to. Yeah. Um, I think WWE is attempting the same thing because I believe they heard Kidani's comments now that he's clarify that kanani is the owner of uh new japan pro wrestling who essentially and i'm totally paraphrasing this uh essentially said yeah we want to come into the u.s and the 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 g1 specials we're running in july are essentially a test and you know we want to go uh 
get on TV there and you know we can produce it really cheap and we'll you know we'll just sell it to some cable network really cheap basically to try to bottom out WWE it's holy, called holy crap it's it, I've sent you this gif earlier today but holy crap it's happening again the war is I mean that again, is Tom. the that is the Paul Heyman method of getting out there. I mean, he turned around, he filmed ECW as cheap as humanly possible I'm and not stuck the it. Talent. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> oh, he, he, he paid, well, Todd Gordon paid them back then, but True. he turned around and he, he basically got those tapes on any channel that would run them. And I mean, I, I lived through, I was a huge ECW mark. Um, and the, that time around 95 going into 96, but like 95 ECW was like just trying to be able to watch that product was an adventure on its own because you had to find what particular channel it was on. And for me, when I was living in New York, it was on the MSG network. And it was whenever MSG decided to put it on. So one week it would be on at midnight on saturday saturday night one night it would be on at three o'clock in the morning one night it would be on at two o'clock in the morning be it it would show that it was on at two o'clock in the morning and then you set the vcr because 1995 and then you wake up the next morning and you go play it and it's an infomercial for hair removal products because they either MSG didn't bother to put the show on or as Paul Heyman would later reveal and various other things, uh, shoot, uh, interviews and that type of thing. Maybe they forgot to send the tape out that week or in certain cases, uh, certain stations actually would watch the product and go, there's no way in hell we're putting a, uh, a crucified Sandman with a barbed wire crown on, on our network, even if it is at three o'clock in the morning. So, I mean, that, that was, and the fact that you can do this now and you can, if you can get a spot on a particular network, it doesn't matter what time it is anymore because of DVR. It doesn't matter as long as you can find it. And if it moves, I mean, your DVR will find it when it moves and you just need to be on a channel somewhere. You have to find somebody like, I mean, TNA is on was on the Pop Network or whatever the hell the Pop Network mm-hmm. is. All you need to do is find it once, lock it in, and there you go. So, so but here's my thing too: they already have the in with Access, so they've got a partnership with a television network in the states already. So they and they've they've, they've got and that. Access has renewed them. So I mean, it's it it's apparently getting an audience. Yeah, Cube, Mark Cuban apparently likes them enough to keep them around. So uh, potentially that's their platform for whatever U.S. product they want to create out of uh, San Diego, San Jose, wherever they end up basing out there. Um, are, is it? I love New Japan. I love WWE. I want them both to do well. I don't think New Japan does well with a with a full United States product in the United States because I think they're going to try to run it like New Japan. And is it's going to be different than WWE, and that's great. We need we need variety in the industry. We need variety as fans. That's why I watch fucking everything. Also, I'm a psycho. So. Yeah, but, that's uh, that that's helps. accurate. But I don't know that their presentation style is strong enough to catch on enough to make it financially viable for them to stay in the United States outside of hardcores like you and me and whoever might listen to this at some point. Wait, someone's going to listen to this? I don't know that it's there for them. Because that, Japan- that product is so specialized in the way it's presented and the way they treat their performers. And, and if they come here, that's how I want them to do it. I don't, you know, I don't want them to try to be WWE light because TNA has tried that and they're owned by an owl now. <laughs> New Japan is a niche. It's, it, I mean, the same way that ECW was a niche too. I mean, it's you've got a small segment of a fan base that will come that will that will watch it. You've got 
a smaller segment of a fan base that will actually come and pay money.